Hi, um, welcome to Tuesday's uh, video of um, places in the Old Testament where we see Jesus. And uh, today we're going to look at a story. It's actually my favorite story in all of the Old Testament. And it's the story of um, Joseph and his brothers. And I guess I identify with this story quite a bit because I grew up with, there were five boys in my family. So I identify with the brothers and uh, how they felt about their younger brother. <clears throat> but this story takes up um, 13 chapters in uh, Genesis. It's the end of Genesis from Genesis 37 to 50. And uh, we're probably going to be looking at this story in at least two uh, lessons to, um, in the next two days, I should say. Because it's such a powerful story and it really does relate to a lot of things that Jesus does in the New Testament. So um, just quickly to go over the story. So there's these 12 brothers and... We talked about this a little before, but Joseph is the youngest of all the brothers. And uh, he is the only son of Rachel, who was his father's favorite wife. And so uh, he becomes the favorite and he gets special things like he bragging to his brothers about this beautiful multicolored coat, which would have been expensive, that his father got him. And his brothers <clears throat> are just fed up with this. And I understand that being fed up with a little brother who gets, uh, who you perceive anyway, gets more than uh, he should. Um, so they throw him into a pit. And then he is sold for 20 pieces of uh, silver, I believe. And, um, and he, he is hauled off to Egypt. And in Egypt, he goes through all kinds of exploits and uh, he gets thrown into jail, not of his own. He didn't do anything to be thrown in jail. He was misunderstood. And um, by uh, Potiphar's wife um, was mad because he wouldn't do something he shouldn't do. And uh, he ends up, um, he has a gift of interpreting dreams. And he ends up interpreting Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh ends up uh, putting him in charge of uh, this whole program to uh, gather in grain during seven good years so that it could sell it on seven bad years. Um, the story goes on, and so he's the second most powerful person of all Egypt. He goes from being in a, um, you know, a pit to a jail to the second most powerful person in Egypt. And uh, it is there that he, um, that there's a famine the second seven years, and his brothers come to get food because Egypt was the only place that had food because. Joseph had done such a good job of gathering the food for the first seven years, which is what the dream was about. Seven fat calves, seven lean calves. And uh, so he's there, and, in, and he fools with his brothers. You know, he accuses them of stealing by putting stuff in their backpacks, and um, he just uh, fools with them to, I guess, pay him back. But eventually he reveals himself. He forgives his brothers, and they come to live in Egypt and uh, do very well there because of Joseph. Um, so I wanted to share, I'm going to talk more about the story tomorrow because it has a lot to do with uh, Passover and what Jesus was doing on the night in which he was betrayed. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. But today I want to talk about the, the um, similarities between Joseph and Jesus. Let's just listen to some of these similarities. Um, he's, Joseph sort of prelude to Jesus and what Jesus does because he's uh, stripped of his royal coat and thrown into the uh, pit to be sold into slavery. Uh, Joseph, uh, and that's the consequences of his brother's sin. So he's <clears throat> thrown into a pit because of his brother's sins. Um, and yet uh, eventually he's lifted up to a seat of honor with the Pharaoh. He rules with wisdom and godliness. He offers forgiveness to his brothers, and he saves his family from drought. Now, and then they become a mighty nation, and they actually end up surviving, so they can go back to Israel and uh, the Promised Land. So he's kind of the key for them to be saved. So think about Jesus for a minute. Jesus is stripped of his royal robe, bears our sin, humanity's sin, and yet eventually is lifted to a seat of honor. His rule is characterized by wisdom and godliness. 
He offers forgiveness to sinners and saves people from um, their from eternal thirst. And uh, it is through Jesus' actions that redemption is brought to the entire world, not just to the Israelite people, but to the whole world. So Joseph is sort of a precursor to what Jesus will do. Now, um, he does have sin. Jesus doesn't. But, um, but it is very similar, that whole story. And, it, and it, it's significant that the Bible gives up 13 chapters to this story. Um, that's a big chunk of the Old Testament. Not many things take up that much. So it's an important story. And it's an important story for a reason. Because it's foreshadowing what exactly what Jesus will do to save us from our sins, to die for our sins, to uh, be lifted up, to be um, ruling justly over the entire world and over our lives. Jesus is somebody that can be trusted. And it's somebody that has been foreshadowed way long time ago, back in the time of Joseph and his brothers. Have a great day and God bless.